ladies and gentlemen. So with this presentation, I just want to give a small impact to, to this discussion. And um, so as I'm a medieval archaeologist, I will have a look on the Middle Ages, but I will not concentrate on um, very specific archaeological excavations. I will rather go back to reflect some of um, our own past projects to think um, what um, this means for an understanding of dynamics of agglomerations. And um, so I will try to make two points. One point is um, the role of medieval urban archaeology, and the other point is um, what is the meaning of urban ecology for understanding um, dynamics of agglomerations. So on I want to emphasize um, that I want to understand medieval archaeology as a kind of a historical archaeology. So what is an important point? Um, it gives us important background information about society and history. In many cases, we have very detailed information. The younger in time, um, the better the, the written sources are normally. And um, we need to take this as an opportunity um, to critically reflect our conceptions. So we heard already today that it's a problem for a comparative approach that we normally compare to some classical um, yeah, towns. And um, I would like to show you that um, even if we have a look on the medieval towns, it's a little bit more complicated than we normally think. So. The point is to get a synthesis of archaeological data and written and pictorial evidence, not to take the modern example just as an analog for earlier periods, but to take this to critically reflect our um, definitions and um, to reflect um, yeah, our methods and our theoretical background. So, Quite short, I would like to refer to three case studies um, coming from some recent projects which are, in most cases, not yet completely finished. So the one which is um, currently going on, that's um, a joint French, Serbian, German excavation project in Serbia, which deals with um, a town of the 6th century. So not the typical urban archaeology of, of the Middle Ages, rather late antiquity, a town founded 525 AD and it was abandoned after three to four generations. We know about a very specific political background and specific historical situation of the foundation of this town. In fact, the emperor Justinian I was born in that um, yeah, the direct neighborhood and so he had a political program to establish the city at that point. And um, if you have a look in the surrounding, um, you can learn quite fast that there is um, no economic reason, or not yet clearly visible an economic reason. So it was in the middle of the nowhere. Um, but um, in order to understand what happened there in terms of a process, we um, tried to have a look in the surrounding landscape. And so one of the quite different um, methods we used, um, one of them was the geoarchaeology. And so we had them um, look at several spots in the, in the close surrounding of the city. So you can see here the LIDAR scan with the, the main city here in Acropolis, um, lower town, upper town. And we can see some more fortification surrounding this. and. Um, what is very important is to see the, the impact of this city, which existed a very short time on the landscape. So um, the one point which is, um, yeah, you, you can't clearly visible it here. So there is in, visible in the LIDAR scan a dam. And there was um, an artificial lake here, um, which changed um, the landscape at that point. And uh, we have um, interesting geoarchaeological results on, on the opposite side of the city where we can see that we have um, a huge sedimentation just from the um, time when the town was founded. So for this very short time there was an impact on the landscape. And um, so we want to try to understand um, yeah, 
the, even if it was a founded town from political reasons, we want to understand this town as a kind of a process. And um, uh, so <coughs> the idea and that's not based on, on archaeological results. It's just a hypothesis which we can use to reflect what we find. So we had um, the idea to think about several phases of um, uh, the existence of the town. So one line marks the hypothetical um, need for energy. Um, we have an idea about carrying capacity, which changes in time because it's not only de dependent from the environment, it also depends from the social organization. Um, and um, we have um, the idea that there may have been some external events like barbaric invasions or earthquakes, which may um, require some repairs. So this is again a change in, in the need um, for resources. And um, in the final stage, we can now observe by archaeobotanical data that there was a kind of ruralization. So we can um, recognize that in the latest um, period, <coughs> there was a lot of dung heaps and a lot of animals and a lot of um, agrarian tools um, in the yeah, rather representative parts of the urban um, landscape. So this is, um, over the time, um, there, there are some periods of increased risk. Um, we have these impacts on the landscape and um, we probably also have some conflicts um, we can recognize within the city between the inhabitants which have different ideas how to use that space. So different agents or stakeholders. Um, so um, we can gain some ideas um, what, what was going on within the city. I need to emphasize we don't have a lot of written evidence from that specific city, but at least we have a clear idea how late antique administration functioned, how antique city functioned, so we can take this background, historical background information to understand that um, case study. The second um, example, this is, um, I call it now hillsides. Um, it's um, normally known as cave towns in southwestern Crimea. Um, this was a joint Ukrainian-German project um, up to 2009. It's not yet published, but the problem is um, our colleagues our corporations, various Ukrainian um, institutions, and the colleagues are now working in Russia. So, and they feel um, yeah, belonging to Russia. So it's a little bit complicated to go on. But um, from what we have done there was a lot of surveys in the surrounding of um, mainly two hill sites. So the one you can see here, that's Mangup. The other one you can see here in the foreground, it's Eski Kermen. Um, very close together, the question how they were related. So the normal interpretation is that there is a chronological um, differentiation. We can't trace it by the archaeological evidence. Um, today, the whole situation is a quite remote landscape. Um, the geology shows that it's not a very, yeah, very easy um, usable landscape because of a karst and a lack of water with very stony soils. So it's a little bit a problematic landscape. But um, what we have done there is also some geoarchaeological research and uh, there was already an American project in the um, neighborhood before. So we have here um, a lot of um, uh, radiocarbon dates from different um, situations of sedimentation. So we can see several stages of, um, of um, uh, increased um, sedimentation and um, to a certain degree this um, corresponds with them. Yeah, periods we know from the written sources and we know already now in um, Eski Kermen and Mangup as some important phases um, in the development of these hillsides. So, but um, there is also a social aspect because um, in the time when um, this um, yeah hillsides were established, so this um, yeah um, triangles here, and Mangup and Eski Kerman. 
Um, this um, was um, also a time period when there established a lot of um, yeah, burial sites with imported materials. And um, in uh, Russian archaeology, this is um, called um, uh, Avaric Gothic um, cemeteries, which um, if you have a look to research history, it's a little bit difficult to take this term. But nevertheless, this established at that time period with a lot of imports. And um, we now had the idea that um, the establishment of this yeah, hill sites, agglomerations, um, is something which is related to um, communication, to establishing groups in um, yeah, competing small neighborhoods. So they're trying to get access um, to, um, to these imports via these um, Byzantine cities at the coast, as Kherson, today Sevastopol. So um, an environmental aspect and a um, social aspect. But now let's come to medieval towns. And I'll just take one example, um, because I worked there for, for many years. But um, you could take. Uh, any other uh, medieval town. Um, the only special specific thing here is you can see on this um, late 19th century photograph um, the medieval town in the in this um, valley. So we have the situation that this is a um, yeah a delimited landscape, and so you can take this as a kind of a uh, the, the, yeah the direct urban surrounding, and you can um, take this as a reference to trace. Um, settlement developments. And what is important, um, so we have early medieval settlement here, we have starting here a late medieval village, and we have um, the late medieval town here. So we have in this small area um, different stages of a settlement development, and um, each stage can be seen as a stage in agglomeration, and the town is only um, the latest point in that development. Um, that the latest point is the modern industri industrialization. Today, all you can see here in the valley is just built over by a yeah, enlarged um, modern town. And what is um, interesting, if we have a look on the, on, on the landscape, is um, to <coughs> recognize that um, these medieval towns um, were established in a changing landscape. So. What we need to have in mind if we look on medieval cities, medieval towns, it's not just um, a process of foundation, it's a change in the whole um, <coughs> rural landscape. And um, so this is again the valley we have seen in the picture before. We have the late medieval town, we have um, the, the high and late medieval village here still existing, um, and we have the early medieval um, yeah, burial sites and settlements in the surrounding. So we can see in the first hand a kind of a settlement concentration um, leading to um, the medieval village. And then we have later on um, the establishment of the city. We have um, the name Geislingen here, and we have old Geislingen at the, um, at the village. So we can trace um, some changes here. And if you have a look on, on the map on the right, it's just a mapping of um, abandoned medieval uh, rural sites in the surrounding, which shows there is a lot of change of abandoned um, settlements in the surrounding. So to see the medieval city, the medieval town, um, as, as the establishment of an agglomeration needs to have a look on the surrounding. And we can think about um, the, yeah, correlation, the interaction between the development of the villages and the development of um, yeah, the towns. And um, this here is just a picture um, pointing on, on the development of, of the villages, which in fact are the result of um, change from a dispersed to a nucleated settlement system, um, where you can um, have an idea of several interrelations as, for example, um, increasing population ag or an agglomeration of people, increasing need of food, and um, so um, more food production with um, some consequences for land use practices as, for example, short, um, shorter fallow periods 
or enlarged um, agrarian fields, um, the removal of hedges and things like this. So it's a complicated system, but we need to take this as a framework to understand what happened in the settlement landscape. And um, now we have seen quite different, um, uh, quite different examples um, of um, agglomerations just from, from the Middle Ages. And we had other papers today already showing even more medieval um, agglomerations. Um, so what I think what could be an interesting point to understand um, these changes is really to have a look on these um, towns as an urban ecosystem. And in several papers, we heard already some ideas which are probably very close um, to that. So we need to see about the interaction of um, water, um, yeah, soil, plants, animals, humans, climate, and probably a lot of more um, factors involved in that. Uh, we need to see that um, an agglomeration is, um, yeah, also brings a concentration of, of material, of energy, and uh, it has its material consequences on the landscape. Um, so, for example, waste. Um, and um, in more modern um, towns, we also have changes in the microclimate, um, heat emission, and things like this. So, urban ecology, um, I think, um, has an important meaning within historical archaeology because it helps to understand um, historical processes of urbanization, of village formation, formation. and um, it helps to integrate um, daily life and social practice. It helps to understand the interaction of culture and uh, nature, however we want to define them. It integrates different methods and disciplines. And um, for sure, there have been a lot of critics against this kind of um, urban ecological methods or approaches as there have been a lot of critics against all these kind of comparative approaches. Um, especially if we have a look on um, what we learn in, um, as historical archaeology quite often if we have the discussion with historians. So they urge us to have a look on the single, on the single site um, and um, we want to in this session, we want to take a more general picture. So if we take these um, models from urban ecology, there is often the suspect that we are too deterministic. So this is true for specific um, views of history, but um, I think um, it's uh, very important um, nevertheless. Another point of critics, um, criticism is um, that most parameters we have in these models we can't um, quantify um, and archaeologically it's quite hard to find them. So, but urban ecology in this context is not a hypothesis. It's rather a background um, where we have to think about all these factors involved in the, the social development if we want to understand agglomerations primarily as a social um, development. It gives an orientation about possible interrelations and um, I think the most important point um, it creates research questions. So agglomerations as an ecological and the social transformation I think if we take this as a background and to, to think about all these single factors which could, which could be involved in that um, we could probably create an interesting perspective um, on, on our topic here. And I um, was uh, quite lucky to see that um, these ideas were present in some of the papers we heard today already. So that's my remarks um, on the topic to, to just give a small input from a kind of historical archaeology. Thank you. <laughs>